Next up, we'll consider the Western Bulldogs, who finished fifth. Um, they we had a 15 and 7 record like Sydney with a percentage of 132.8% and their finals exit was in the grand final as runners up. So for the second year in five attempts, they've made the grand final from outside the top four, which is quite bizarre. What did you make of the Western Bulldogs? They were the pinnacle like of that inconsistency. Like the first 18 weeks of the season, like it was what them. What was that, sorry? The first 18 weeks of the season. You said inconsistency. Oh, inconsistency. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the first 18 weeks of the season, everyone was saying Bulldogs and Melbourne, two teams. Yeah. But then that last four or five weeks, everyone was just like, what the fuck's happened to yeah, the Bulldogs? Yeah. They just didn't look like the same team. It happens, and it's an even competition. So if you drop off, even though you've been the, one of the best teams, and I certainly do think that we're the top two team um, all year, if you drop off by a few percent, other teams overtake you. Yeah. Um, so they, they time that poorly, but... The, I do what I love to see in football is the best teams lifting in the finals. Yeah. I like to see the best teams make it, and I think we got the grand final that we, should, we deserved. That's yeah. the one we've expected all year. Yeah, uh, they had a fantastic yeah. season. Um, they just teased us a bit. Yeah, let's come up with some positives. I'm sure there's plenty for a team that came second. I'm going to say I'm going to go a bit left fieldish with this one. Dunkley being reintegrated and happy and a good part of the team when he wasn't injured. That I don't think they're going to worry about losing him now. He re-signed, in fact, I think. Uh, I'm not sure if he resigned, but uh, you're right. Yeah. He did signal an intent to stay. Yeah. Um, I don't know where his contract sits, but that is a really good point. I didn't actually write that down. I think that is a massive positive. That was a bit of a question mark with him bringing in Trelaw. Yeah. Dunkley yeah. was nearly traded deadline day uh, 12 months ago, uh, and now he doesn't want to leave, presumably. Yeah. So. And even more broader with just the Dunkley being happy, it's sort of just that whole midfield synergy. Like mm. With that many inside traditional midfielders everyone was sort of like how the hell is this going to work but mm. it worked really well they all didn't drop off in production no. really like did they push Trelaw I think they pushed Trelaw to a flank at one stage late and he dropped off but then he came back hard like obviously he played yeah. as well as he did in the grand final um, but yeah I agree it's pleasing to see yeah. to be honest I think the finals campaign is the biggest positive like for a, it was a good home and away season yeah. with that poor tail end but they were outclassed Essendon when people expected them to be the upset of the round. They yeah. thought the dogs were vulnerable. They pumped it by yeah. 50 points. Uh, that Lions victory was incredible. Mm. Um, it was a good even game. Either side could have won it. And it took that clutch goal from Bailey Smith um, on his left to, to seal it. That was one of the best games all year, if not the best. And then they just torched Port Adelaide in a game yeah. no one saw coming. Like I, I tipped the Bulldogs that week, if I'm not mistaken. I think yeah. I did. I think I tipped Port, but I wanted the dogs to win because I knew they'd put on a better grand even. Yeah. Portwood, but yeah, that aged like milk. Oh, they yeah, they just outclassed them. They just and out muscled them, outworked them, smashed them from the outset. So it was just an unbelievable finals performance that was reminiscent of 2016. It made it very hard for me to tip against the dogs in the grand final, which I did do. But when you see the dogs in full flight, they're very yeah. very hard to stop. Uh, I think the grand, grand final experience obviously didn't go down so well uh, in that last quarter and a half. But um, Most they, of the game they were there. Yeah, 100%. It was a much better grand final than the, the scoreline would suggest. But uh, uh, just the experience as well for those players as well. It's um, Anytime you get grand final experience, they're now, they're now yeah. a very experienced side, that Bulldog side. Because yeah, so, like, some of the guys they brought in since 2016 now have had that taste of it, like your Nortons, yep. those sort of yep, Smith. Smith. Yeah, Smith, yeah, 100%. Yeah, um, totally agree. Yeah. Uh, the makeshift forwards and backs worked well. I think, uh, obviously, on paper, that was a question mark for them, particularly in the key position uh, parts of the ground. So um, Alex Keith was a good recruit. That was only yep. 12 months ago, wasn't it? And they brought in Bruce. So that's yeah. actually two very good recruits. They've had Bruce for a couple of years, haven't I they? I think they got them both last year, eh? I'm pretty sure they've had Bruce for at least a couple. I reckon you're wrong. Either way, doesn't matter. Google. All right, you Google that and I'll keep <laughs> talking. But I reckon it, this was his first year. It got traded for picks 32 and 51. Um Regardless, Josh Bruce finding a way to kick... Well, the leading goal scorer this year. Norton had a great year and, and Bruce kicked more goals. So uh, uh, that was a great effort. So makeshift forwards and backs, uh, in particular, someone like a Cody Waitman uh, and Mitch Hannon, those, those smaller types, really contributed well. Uh, was I right? I was at conclusion of 2019 season, Bruce request, requested his trade. So he COVID, the two COVID years. Oh. I was so confident then. <laughs> what happened to him last year? No, that's he had right. a shit year last. He had a yeah. poor year. You 2020, got me there. Yeah. Okay, you got me. That's why I forgot about him because yeah. I was like, "This was the year that he came good." Okay, yeah. fair play. I was so confident there. <laughs> um, I was right about the trade. It was thirty-two and fifty-one because yeah. I did a video on it recently. Uh, either way, um, just the, those guys emerging. Yeah. Bont career best year. Would you agree with that? Yeah, in terms of accolades and stuff, maybe raw statistically might have had. Uh, I, I don't know. The, did he win the MVP or the coaches award? 
Yeah, in terms of awards and actual MVP. production, I'd say this is best year, but maybe mm. raw stats. He's kicked 31 it. goals for a guy that oh, yeah. played a fair bit of midfield and dominated in the midfield. 31 goals for oh, yeah. a modern midfielder is outstanding. Uh, we talked about Trelaw, uh, Libra in the guts, yeah. McRae too. Like, McRae had another really yeah, yeah. good year as well. So their, their midfield is, is fantastic. I think the emergence of Bailey Smith on top of all that, yeah. uh, particularly as a finals clutch player, am I sick of seeing him all over TikTok? Yes. <laughs> Should I spend less time on TikTok? Yes. No. <laughs> um, no, but in terms of a footballing sense, uh, yeah, yeah, outstanding finals performance in particular from Bailey Smith and Caleb that's Daniel. Why is the most followed player in the AFL, Mark? Yeah, yeah, that's incredible. Just, yeah. Yeah. Um, Caleb Daniel is almost the barometer player for the Bulldogs. When Caleb Daniel is playing well, the Bulldogs are likely tearing you a new one. Uh, and we saw that in the first half of the grand final. If you remember, Ta- Caleb Daniel had like 26 possessions at halftime or something. He was the favourite for the Normie at one stage. Yeah, yeah. He, he deservedly so. So, yeah. and, and when he's you know controlling the ball out of the back half, he doesn't really make mistakes. Uh, one of my favourite players to watch, to be honest, Caleb uh, Daniel. Um, so him, him playing well was a, was a massive positive for them. They played 41 players out of a possible 44, so their mm-hmm. list got a lot of exposure, um, and there's a lot of upside of youth to come in. You know, Ugo Hagen was not really a factor at all this year, and they've got to draft Sam Darcy, who's the best key position player in this year's draft. Uh-huh. So, um, God damn these father-son <laughs> and academy rules. Yeah. They've really benefited well from the father-son yeah. rule, in, uh, like Liberatore, yeah. uh, Mitch Wallace to a lesser extent. Uh, Darcy now. There was another one even, I think, for him. Uh, the Cordys are both father-sons. Lockie Hunter. Lockie Hunter, yeah. That's and, um, in my head. and they stole Josh Dunkley as a father son from Sydney, so it's still technically <laughs> no. Um, negatives. Uh, lackluster end of the year almost cost them. I think we, mm. we already touched on that. 16 of 17 goals in a row uh, in the grand final. So that, that was just... I, I, uh, 100 I to 7 or whatever I was in the last quarter yeah, and a half. I find score. it hard to really blame them. I mean, yes, the body language dropped off, yeah. like we said. Uh, that looked poor, but it was such an exquisite display of football from Melbourne that I don't really think there's too much shame on the Bulldogs. Mm. And, and when you start to get six goals down in a grand final, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm being a bit generous there. Uh, I'd still think, as a negative, they probably need to uh, keep revolutionising... Uh, revolutionising, yeah? Is that the right yeah, word? Yeah, revolutionising. Yeah, nice. Um, their back line uh, mm. with Keith uh, as sort of a... St- maybe stop gaps Especially harsh. with Easton Wood retiring. Yeah, I was going to say. So they brought in Tim O'Brien. So I think mm. that kind of cancels that out a little bit. Maybe he's not quite the same player, but... Uh, longer term, they need a they need a solution down back, and their ruck dynamic as well. Tim yeah, Ing- I was going to flag the ruck situation. Tim English got a lot of criticism this year, which I think is a little harsh. He's a young guy, and if he wasn't playing in a team that made the grand final, I don't think people would be narrowing in on him so much. Mm. But in terms of, uh, criticism, but they're playing him like a third tall. Like he's not rucking at all. Like they'll have mm. him like Lockie, look, what's his name, Young, but just went to Carlton. He was mm. doing their secondary rucking when Steph Martin wasn't playing. He wasn't rucking at all, and Tim English mm. was drafted as a ruck, not as a forward pocket that happens to be six foot nine. Yeah, but, but that's criticism of the Bulldogs, isn't it, rather yeah. than English. Um, but I believe he was carrying an injury. I'm not too sure mm. exactly what's happening there. But he, he is kind of a new, strange, modern type of ruckman that they, I think they're still trying to work uh, out how to play him. Um, a Rory Lobb type, I'd sort of describe Yeah, him but as. he's not really a key forward either. He's almost like mm. an oversized midfielder. But uh, It's almost like, it reminds me of when Nat Nui was drafted to the Eagles and it took a while before we worked out the best use of his abilities. Now, uh, he's pretty much a stoppage-only contested beast. And I'm not saying English is that, but we kind of worked a game plan around him. So I uh, wonder if English is going to be that sort of similar type. How would you grade this season? Probably B. I probably would have given him a little higher, but the last week killed him for top four. If they'd made that top four, I'd probably give him a bit better grade. Interesting. I'm going to give him an A because I think th- I feel like their finals performances wiped that last few rounds clean because the mm. only reason you try and make top four is for a better chance to get to the grand final, which yeah. they did anyway. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So I get what you're saying, but I think if you overcome that, that wipes the slate clean. So uh, It's a weird one. For them to go from seventh and eliminated week one last year to But the amount finals. of travel they did to get to the grand final as well, like if they... Finished top four, got a week off, or but they couldn't have played in Melbourne. Don't forget. Yeah, but still, they could have settled in Perth weeks earlier. Been like the Melbourne yeah. boys getting out because the Melbourne boys were able to get out after they did their two weeks. They sort of. I don't think it cost them. Put it that way. I think they were mm. going to lose that grand final regardless. But I see what you're saying. Melbourne were a lot more settled. Yeah. That's for sure. Uh, so I'm going to stick with A. You went with B. Yep. Uh, off season, they don't hold a first rounder. They hold a series of seconds and thirds and fourths, just to match points. Just to match points for. Um, for Sam Darcy, who's yeah. the best key position player in the draft. They lost Lipinski 
Uh, Young went to Carlton and Eastern Woods retired and they brought in O'Brien. So uh, a bit of young talent leave, but not necessarily overly rated. I think when Uh you look at the Bulldogs midfield, how are they going to fit Lipinski in there? So yeah, I think uh, all in all, nothing really too concerning. Um, Will they be thereabouts again next year? Yeah, for sure. Because like like we were saying with Sydney, like how you were using the comparison, like after 16 they had that thing and then they've come back and they've come back for good. Yeah. I think they're at that. They've come back for good stage of their list projection from like whenever they took Bont or whatever, like that ten year path. I agree. I with think that, they're yeah. in the here for good. I think they're mature and yeah. I think yeah. it would take a lot for them to drop off again. 